Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Just another quick one today. I'm going to be giving you a little look at another nootropic or smart drug called Siltep. Uh, this is a nootropic stack, meaning it's a, a number of different ingredients all used together, hopefully synergistically, and it comes from natural stacks. They sent me this pot to review, so I thought I'd give it a go, and I was hoping that it might provide me with a natural and safer alternative to modafinil. So, uh, without further ado, I'll let you know how I got on with it. I go into a lot more detail regarding the mechanisms of action for Siltep on my blog. Um, talk about uh, all the different ingredients for scolin, artichoke extract, um, etc. and how they're supposed to work. The general concept behind it though is it's supposed to boost long-term potentiation. This is the ability of uh, your neurons to communicate with each other, the strength of the synaptic connections. Long-term potentiation means that that connection gets stronger, and this means it's easier for them to communicate. So in theory, it should help you build more connections throughout your brain and uh, cement the ones you've got. So ideally, it should help you with learning, which it does by increasing something called C-AMP, which is cyclic adenosine monophosphate, which comes from ATP, the uh, energy currency of your cells. Like I say, it gets pretty complicated. It ultimately improves um, DNA transcription in your neurons, uh, or does it? It turns out that there's a little bit of controversy. A recent Reddit post uh, that I was reading pointed out several studies that suggest that the ingredients in Siltep might not be enough to uh, stimulate the kind of effects that, um, that you're hoping to get. This is often a problem with many uh, miracle supplements much as resveratrol recently. Resveratrol is a, a substance found in red wine. It's supposed to boost mitochondrial function as well as being a very effective antioxidant. It was found to have amazing effects when used on mice, and everyone assumed it was great when around spending lots of money on it. But then studies on humans found that the amount you'd have to consume uh, if you're human size is just too great for it to really have any effect. So there's concern that the amount of um, active components uh, in the forscolin and the artichoke extract uh, isn't enough to have the same effect on humans as it's been shown to have in mice. There's also another um, concern that it can increase acetylcholine, cholinesterase, something like that, which has made some people feel tired, but they've included uh, acetyl-L-carnitine to try and combat that and prevent people from being tired. My, uh, that's because Acetyl cholinesterase. I really can't say that. Again, you're gonna have to read my blog. But this stuff that your brain produces uh, when C amp is increased can make some people feel tired, which to me says that actually, one way or another, it is increasing uh, C amp, cyclic adenosine monophosphate, and that it could increase uh, neuronal connections. So, although there's no studies to support it, the, these small doses working in humans, there's also no studies to say it doesn't and really just going to have to take it from what people say and make up your own decisions and obviously maybe try it yourself. Personally, um, what did I find? That's, that's really what this review is about. Like I said, if you want to get more in depth um, with the uh, mechanisms of action, then read the blog post. But for me personally, um, well first of all, what's it supposed to do? What it's supposed to do is improve uh, memory, as, as mentioned, but also your, some people say it improves their desire to learn, possibly through an increase of Dopamine, and this also has a precursor to dopamine in it, um, L-phenylalanine. I don't know why everything has to be so difficult to say, but uh, it sort of increases dopamine that way. But also, uh, dopamine is used more in the brain when you increase C amp. Uh, so, so there's that, and that could increase your desire to learn and your focus. And other people say it also improves their uh, ease of sociability, that they find it easier to talk to people. And others still say that it improves other. Uh, stimulants such as xanthines like, like caffeine. So, did I experience these things? Well, to an extent, yes, to an extent, no. When I took three, I got a bad headache, and I think that's because it's a uh, vasodilator, I think the four scolin is, meaning that it widens the blood vessels, made me a bit lightheaded. I have low blood pressure anyway, it's so not ideal. When I tried two, I had a little bit of brain fog, which could have been due to the acetyl cholin espinase. Um, and when I tried just one, it was I didn't have any negative side effects, but the good side effects were less. Uh, so I had a bit of brain fog, a bit of tiredness from the from two tabs, but I did feel some uh, some benefits from that. 
uh, the benefits were I, I do think that I had more interest in learning. I seemed to start work quicker with less procrastination that day. I also found that I was more absorbed in what I was learning. I did more research just out of desire and I rem remembered a lot more of it. But I also remembered a lot more uh, other small details, especially in conversation. I was finding that I remembered things that people mentioned. I was focusing more on them, less in my own head. Uh, I'm often in my own head, I'm like one of these daydreamer types, which I actually like, so I don't want to completely get rid of that. But I found when I was on this, I was better able to concentrate. I found what people were saying more interesting, so I was less of a jackass. So in that regard, it, it did also improve social ease. And I didn't know, I didn't uh, research that part before trying it. So in that regard, it means it's unlikely to have been a placebo. I also think I was better at remembering stuff that wasn't even uh, recent that I haven't learned whilst on this. So I was remembering things uh, from the past, which I would normally struggle to bring to mind. So that was interesting as well, especially because I can't think of what the mechanism of action might be for that. Um, yeah, I didn't especially find that it boosted the effect of stimulants, although it did go very nicely with uh, modafinil. I don't recommend modafinil, as I've said before, but I thought I'd try this combination just for the sake of a review, and they did work quite well together. I also tried it with yerba mate tea, because it's supposed to be so good with xanthines, and it has three xanthines in it, and I found that uh, that wasn't such a good combination, because my low blood, fresh, uh, low blood pressure was, again, a bit of an issue. I felt really dizzy, um, which isn't great. And like all these things, I don't think messing with your brain chemistry on a regular basis is a particularly good idea. Don't get too worried about messing with it, because if you think about it, you're doing that every time you take caffeine, and you do it certainly every time you have alcohol, and nobody worries about that. It's funny how it's okay when you're doing it in a way to uh, ruin your brain, but you don't seem to mind when you're actively trying to improve it. But still, I think it's best uh, not to use acute nootropics, things that have uh, an immediate effect, on too regular a basis, but rather to save them to keep them effective and use them just when you were going to do a massive bit of research or learning. And that's probably how I would use this, as well as maybe if I was going to give a speech or something, because like I say, it, it does seem to improve my presence and thus ease the social experience. Um, but I wouldn't use it every single day. The only new tropics I would consider using every single day would just be things to improve health, like perhaps um, uh, omega-3 or something like that. I would also say that things that boost energy, maybe such as creatine, could be used every day, well I do use creatine every day, maybe, maybe for bodybuilding, but um, yeah, something that gives you kind of this acute focus, it's messing with your brain chemistry, and I think using it every single day is a little bit, uh, a little bit short-sighted, especially when there's some uh, uncertainty around mechanisms of action. I mean, you wouldn't even use alcohol every day, and people are starting to say that using caffeine every day isn't such a good idea, you can see an article on that on the blog, but yeah, so... My review is not a, not a 5 out of 5 review, but I would say that I would prefer using this to modafinil. I think it's definitely safer than that. There's none of the kind of horrible negative side effects. Using two capsules gave me a little bit of brain fog, a bit of tiredness, um, which is something other people have mentioned, uh, despite attempts to mitigate that. And uh, using one, just like I say, was, it was a mild experience, so nothing like modafinil really, but it did improve my uh, desire to learn, I think, a little bit and probably did help my memory, so like I say, maybe I would use one tab for doing something like um, a lot of research I have to do, or writing a particularly in-depth article on a topic I'm not new with, just occasionally, and maybe I would consider using one before giving the best man speech that I have to give next week, we'll see how that goes, or it's in two weeks actually, not that that's important to you at all, especially if you're probably watching this in the future. But yeah, so that's my review of Siltep, I'd say, also bear in mind everyone's going to be different, that's particularly true with all nootropics. So just give it a go. I, I don't think this is one that you have to avoid. Um, and the reviews on it are quite mixed. People like um, Dave Asprey and Tim Ferriss love it, and other people say they have no effect. It all to do with your own brain chemistry and expectations. Uh, but for me, it's been interesting, certainly. It's something I might occasionally turn to, but it hasn't been like a, a life-changing experience. So that's me out, and I'll see you next time for more videos. In the future, on here as well as on my blogging, we'll be looking at more uh, non-nutritic ways to boost brain power using things like meditation, brain training and um, uh, lifestyle factors which I think is a much better way of trying to enhance the old grey matter and of course I'll be uploading the usual videos on health and fitness and uh, training and some other stuff like jumping higher and punching harder so stay tuned if you want to see that and uh, thanks for watching as always I'll see you next time